Dave and Noki, not to invite uh, Jock to present at any first home buyer seminars in the future. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, our next uh, presenter is uh, Bradley Kendall from uh, Wisconsin. Bradley, do you have a, 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 a USB or something you can plug in? Beautiful. While they're doing that, I just thought I'd put a bit of air time with some um, fascinating bikini statistics that I found on the, on the web recently. <laughs> Uh, by the way, if you're not aware of bikini statistics, it uh, reveals much, but it hides the most important parts. So these statistics are uh, just picked out of the air and uh, they probably reveal more in the fact that there's data missing. So I just checked up on Google this morning. Um, in 2012, in, across the EU, 5,500 branches were closed. In the, year to two th in the year to June 2016 in Australia, we lost 315 branches. Um, last year in the UK, over 600 bank branches were closed. And this is the serious one of all. In the USA, it's estimated by hopefully a reputable source, because I didn't check it, that the number of branches across the US will be cut in half over the next 10 years. Amazing data. Okay, so Bradley, um, Bradley, Kendall is, uh, has been with Whisper for four years as an enterprise account specialist with a specific focus on banking and finance industry. Prior to working at Whisper, Bradley was a Whisper customer administrator at NAB. Bradley's career in NAB spanned 22 years working in operations, major incident management and people management and business engagement roles. Bradley has a consulting approach to account management and solution sales backed by a deep domain and industry expertise to match requirements and aspirations with the power of Whisper communication platform. Bradley today will talk to us about Telstra Whisper for branchless banking. The banking and finance industry is increasingly is increasing the speed of digital adoption with online and mobile banking continuing to be a key focus means requiring to move quickly and securely with customers on the move. I think I'll leave the rest of Bradley. Thank you very much. If you wouldn't mind, welcome Bradley to stage. Thanks guys, a bit of a change of pace, hey? Is it just me who's noticing a bit of a change of pace? Yeah. Um, okay, so um, let's get on with it. So thanks for your time. Um, always um, exciting to hang out with Rocky and see what he's got going the latest uh, papers and uh, very much uh, appreciate your time uh, to, uh, to present to you guys and share a little bit about uh, where uh, enterprise messaging is heading and what we and Telstra are doing about that. So we'll do a little bit of what the, the enterprise messaging solution that we, that we provide is about and then we'll go into some examples of banking finance. So uh, Whisper has been around for about 12 years. It's uh, it's you know, has various different ways of describing it, but enterprise messaging is probably the easiest way. Uh, it's a high availability cloud platform available uh, and used across all sorts of industries, and we'll go through some examples of that. Uh, a lot of really key sort of partner and provider ecosystem driven um, uh, elements that have come into being, especially in the last few years. Really exciting to have other techn technology partners working with us and we're performing a bit of an ecosystem. We can communicate uh, globally with a lot of customers around the world. Um, main elements, two-way communication, messaging to any channel that you provide to any way. So if you thought, if I, if I was not limited by technology in any way, and I could communicate with anyone in any channel, in any device, any way I wanted to, then the technology would just have to go away. It's all about what I want to achieve. How do I want to communicate? What I want to say? Do I want to reply? How do I engage and how do I increase engagement and touch and connection with my customers and my staff? So a few sort of dry, you know, not very interesting elements there, that template and contacts, but really that sort of system integration, analytics and reporting, really nice way of um, framing um, what we do at a, at a very high level. So a bit more into the detail. The objective of any kind of communication is to make it easy and to make it targeted. Conversation with whoever it is you want to have a conversation with. In the in the future and current branchless banking world, you can imagine that if people don't 
wants to go into a branch or one doesn't exist, how do you maximise engagement in a way that they want to engage from? Is it social media? Is it an app? Is it SMS? Disposable apps? How do they want to communicate? And if you provide them, then they get to engage with you in a way that's relevant to them rather than <coughs> what you just happen to provide. Okay? So there's various sorts of messaging. My time in, in NAB, uh, the interesting thing about me that I was supposed to remember uh, was that I had been with NAB for a very long time and I was in an operational role and I was given a promotion to run major incident management for a bank. And I got that promotion and I was very happy about that and two weeks later, uh, in 2010, NAB had a really big two week long system outage that stopped the market and uh, was catastrophic. So that was my introduction uh, to my new role. So lots of critical messaging, right? And that is where Whisper has kind of grown up, where it's, where it's got its uh, its availability, its governance, and its uh, resilience. What we're talking about today is more operational and informational messaging. How do we communicate uh, with our customers about things like onboarding, servicing, uh, information, marketing, research, that kind of thing? So messaging will go to and from all, all range of different people, customers, communities, executives, staff, suppliers. But then this is the interesting stuff. So, so is it about messaging and communicating at a certain time of day? You know, get people when they are on the phone in the morning for their breakfast or on public transport. They want to communicate in the middle of the day because they're likely at work and they're not going to interact with that kind of thing. Maybe I've got time-based messaging. I want to make sure that every week or every change in a cycle, I can communicate. And the channel and device stuff, that, that I'll do more, I'll, I'll get into more detail on that in a minute. Location-based, there's two types. So there is the location of where I am right now, and there is the location of where I live, or where I work, or where I go to the gym, and that kind of thing, where I bank. So any of these different ways of communicating, the outcome is obviously just to make it timely, personalised, interactable, and relevant. So back to this concept of what if I could communicate any way I wanted to, and I didn't have to think about the technology. So the Whisper software and infrastructure provides access to all forms of communication, there are things like, you know, a video really isn't a form of communication as a channel, but when you're looking at your phone, you can maybe watch a video on how to uh, quickly and easily finish off an application form, or uh, what new products and services are on there, video is very powerful. Um, thinking a little bit about Jock was saying, about what Jock was saying around face-to-face -face interaction. Branch is very much face-to-face. -face. I think WeWork and um, Little Tokyo 2 is very much face-to-face. -face. Um, in our office, I find, as I walk around our office, I see the faces of other colleagues of mine, maybe in Singapore, the US, or even around our own office on their screens, that they've got the headsets and they're talking to each other. So we are quite meeting room poor in our building, but I often see people just collaborating because they can pop their headsets on, it's a private conversation, but it's very personal. We've got the, the smiling face of our colleague from Seattle or, or Hong Kong on a screen. As I walk around, you get a little kind of way of feeling them on. But it's, it's a nice way of knowing, and, and Telstra offers a lot of solutions around um, instant instant messaging. You know, I want to get in touch with a specialist now, and I want to chat with them now, or even pop up a video. And I won't steal Robin Sunder on his sort of wonderful video that articulates all that stuff. So, if you could communicate any way you wanted to, then you have in your kit bag a range of products and services and channels that you can just deliver. You can do this. I can at the trigger of some. You know, here's a list here. So at the trigger of uh, maybe moving into the third phase of onboarding customer for the first time as a mortgage holder, what do, how do I want to communicate with them? Or relevantly, how do they want me to communicate with them? So my folks, if their phone rang, probably not even a mobile, but a landline phone, that would be their optimal and favorite way of, of getting communicated with them. They're in their 80s, they think things are silly, and that's just how they operate. If you can make the phone ring, read out a message that's automated, uh, and with a possibility of, um, you know, press two to connect through to one of our friendly customer service groups if you want to. Um, more likely, you know, disposable apps or, or, or resident apps, emails, video, SMS, you get the idea. If you if you offer all those products and all of those channels, then your customers will be able to resonate with you in a way that's important to them. So this is a small section of our client list, and the reason I put this up early is. This is the international list, by the way. So you can see it's like the McDonald's is, and uh, the, the Singapore Post and things like that. Um, this is a small selection of the banks that we work with. They're intended to be more internationally recognised. There's a lot of Australian financial institutions that use us as well. But 
the reason I put this up is because we started life here in emergency services. So uh, triple zero services, police, fire, all of the agencies. That gave us the ability to be invested in by these organisations and to have uh, redundancy, resilience, strength. You know, the list is always on. And then we started to move into government agencies, federal, state and local. Government agencies were very hard to do business with because they have 700 pages worth of requirements, like ISO, ISO standards, all those kinds of things. So at those opposite corners, you get resiliency and you know, data sovereignty, compliance, regulatory requirements, all those kinds of things. And then volume up here. So these guys do all of their messaging through us. So in the corners, including banking and finance, which is you know, getting on the, the uh, getting the contract signed with those guys, um, the amount of due diligence, security, you know, banks are the best at security, unless you ask someone else. Banks are the best, the best at security. They will put you through the security ringer. So those corners are intended to articulate the proposition of why we do this. Telstra is invested in this way, and why I love the platform, and why I can go and talk to a mining company, or a you know, health services company, or a utility, or a bank. We don't have to worry about the technology, it is there. And over time, we are building out our technology partner network. So uh, very recent addition, ServiceNow, we, we now are certified with ServiceNow, and lots of customers are running and grabbing our platform to be used inside that product, and that's been coming on as well. So our affiliate partners are, are basically resellers um, in, in order of actual size. Um, consulting partners, you know, you get the idea. The technology partners are the exciting ones. You know, um, going back to our previous presenter, those kind of um, collaborations with other technologies that provide something very unique and very interesting, um, I find very exciting. And I think working with those guys is really, really cool. Okay, a little bit about banking finance. We've done, 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 done the what is, we still at a really high level, and I am going quickly, so we can pause and take some questions at the end. I want to sort of slow down a little bit now and go into the detail around banking finance. So in our, you know, going, looking at the brand sheet, all of our customers can use us for business resilience, operations, communications, and customer engagement. <coughs> Today, we're mostly talking about customer engagement, but you get the idea. So able, the ability to automate, which is important, that kind of customer touch, onboard servicing, things like patients, whatever it happens to be, using your in-house systems, or using your web browser interface, you can send messages to, to your customers, again, branded, relevant, multi-channel, whichever way they want to receive the information across different products and services. So is it process and product driven? Is it about notifications? But really engagement and touch. In a branchless world, engagement and touch is really important. Security, multi-channel, multi-lingual importantly as well. And for things like, you know, campaigns, marketing, segmented, uh, you know, messaging, Operational communications, you get the idea. Things like, uh, you know, driving costs out of uh, mail out packs, call centre interactions. Um, that's an interesting one because depending on the organisation, some organisations say to me, I want my people to talk to my customers. I don't want to drive them away from their contact centres. Other organisations say, I don't want to ever have to deal with someone on the phone because it costs me this much. Whereas a, a, an interaction on the phone will cost a, a, a digital interaction will cost and there's probably a blend there as well of all sorts of forms. High value clients, new clients, a bit more touch, a bit more face-to-face -face or human-to-human -human, uh, um, communication, and then move into lower cost channels um, further on from there. Um, we won't bother about business resilience, you get the idea. Okay, so customer engagement. So what I've got, and I'll put the number up on the screen at the end when we're taking questions. I've got a phone number, a mobile phone number. Text any word to that, and people will use you. This is what the Telstra guys have set up. Text the word finance in there and all of the demos that you see here, all of the mock-ups of content will all be able to be retrieved on your phone. You can play with it and you can share with your colleagues and things like that. Um, the idea of me um, sending all this out distracts you from kind of, you know, getting through it. But it's all available as is the, uh, as, as are the slides. So a simple example of a way of, of generating messaging. So this is delivered by SMS in this particular case. It could be an email, it could be a social media publish. This is a survey. So a very simple, short survey to say, how did you how did you like the interaction we had with our contact centre, our website, our product, our, our 
picture and pulse of whatever it happens to be. Nice, simple, short survey, not like the ones you get from Qantas and Virgin, which take 25 minutes and you only answer if you're cranky. Um, these are literally two, three questions to be done. It will get a small amount of, inf of information from a larger uh, proportion of your customers. Whisper dashboards or feeding that information back into your CRM shows you what that what people have said, uh, what their messaging are, what their messaging is. You know, a, a nice little one here where you know slide the bar left to right, the little smile. You've got a smiley face on the right and a uh, and a sad face on the left. You get the idea. All these little instant app um, uh, capabilities come with the platform, and there's a big library of all of these different types of types of faces and templates. So. Messaging, some kind of a survey, the analytics, and then the ability to drive that from your systems as an option. That's one example, and you can ingest these from your, from your phone later on. So another example is that kind of uh, on-brand you know, relationship-based messaging. So how to keep customers happy about the fact that they've got the mortgage and the credit card now, maybe you want them to have other products that they can take, take advantage of. And I'll show you some of the examples of this one in a second. Um, VIP personalization. It doesn't even really have to be VIP, it can just be personalization. So the thought of, uh, yes, we want to have some of that peer-to-peer, face-to-face communication, but I can put that out, of, out there on people's phones without investing in apps. I can do that using browser and our, our HTML5 technology so that I can send uh, personalised if, pers if I'm a mobile banker or a personal uh, banker and I, and I want to communicate in a personalised way to all of my customers about something that's going on, maybe an event that's coming up, um, please book time to make an appointment or book a, uh, you know, a, a seat at one of my seminars coming up, I can do that. And this is another example there where I might have, uh, this, this is less about um, onboarding, more in the servicing space. So an SMS, maybe a push notification to an app, maybe email, uh, click through to a, a secure link where I can talk about payment options. So I've missed a payment, what do I want to do about it? Pay it now, request an extension, already paid. The request extension goes to my, to my, my calendar. The, uh, the pay now might take me to uh, the app to talk to that payment or the PayPal or something like that. So this type of technology, and we're focusing a little bit on disposable apps here. I'll show you some other examples in a sec. But the purpose of this is to sort of automate this process. So reducing the cost of collections and the overhead that's associated with um, getting, getting a message out to people and responding. It's good all done by phone call as well. Right? So the phone rings, press one to say you've already paid it, press two to say you request an extension, that kind of thing. Okay, uh, application process, I like this one. So this is quite heavily used in a range of different um, use cases. So the idea of receiving a message with where I'm at in a certain process. So it could be um, on stage three of getting my insurance claim completed, getting onboarded with a new credit card customer or mortgage, uh, a lease, whatever the case may be. These are also quite often used as where is this project up to or where is this incident at or this business continuity event. So it can be used internally or externally. But the idea of providing an update for where I am at in a multi-stage process so that I don't have to contact you and you don't have to contact me. You know, don't have to make many phone calls, don't have, to, don't have to spend that money on uh, contact center call outs to advise people where they're up to. Uh, another way of reducing um, the friction and the cost of this kind of process. Another example here, um, we're moving into sort of, I'll go through this a little bit quicker because this is kind of now into business resilience, other types of communication, but see uh, are you safe messages, progress reports, dashboards, we'll get to the end of this quickly and I'll show you guys some of these examples that you can use yourself. Staff communications, um, BCP activations, you get the idea. So the reason why enterprise messaging is available to you through Telstra is sort of captured some of, in some of these statistics here. So Whisper is accredited, high availability, Technology conversation tends to tends to go away, and you start to focus more about um, how it is. Just to check, I've got internet. Um, you, need to, you, you can then sort of. Focus
focus on how it is that you're going to satisfy different use cases rather than um, the technology itself. 